Hello, and welcome to today's presentation on an introduction to user experience monitoring. This presentation is a prerequisite to a Fogged experience monitor trial. First, let's cover a brief agenda. So the agenda today is going to be to talk about what we measure, how we collect it, the network configuration, and then finally, what to expect when your appliance arrives when you're beginning your trial. First, let's start with what we measure. So basically what we're looking at is a user connecting through the internet to a web server. What we're trying to measure here or get a sense of is the user requests. When they request a page from a server, what happens? Okay, so let's start with a simple question. How many interactions does it take to pull up a web page? Take a minute to think about that. Okay, so a page view is it one interaction or is it two interactions? I'll give you a hint. Okay, a page is actually a request and a response. So it's what we call two interactions. The request gets fired from the user's browser to the web server and the web server responds with some page that, that was requested. Okay, so your answer is two interactions. Okay, now for the complete page view to see the whole page with all of the content Let's take a look at that one. So are there just two interactions when it comes to a whole page? Okay, that's just for the HTML. That's just for the page itself. Now what we really have is the HTML references in order to create its whole page, the whole visualization. It references graphics, style sheets, JavaScripts, a bunch of other pieces that can make up that page. Okay, so these individual requests and responses there's an individual one for every element. So it's not uncommon for a home page to have up to 30 different elements. So what you'll see is 30 different request response pairs going back and forth between that end user's browser and the web server. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to intercept that traffic as it comes over the internet. So it comes through the internet, through a router, a firewall, through a switch or load balancer, and then usually into some web servers on the back end. You'll see those labeled servers 1, 2, and 3. So ideally, what we want to do is we want to pick off very specific traffic that we want. So for a trial, an ideal deployment location might be just to pick out one web server and to measure all the requests and responses into it. Now alternatively, or during a production deployment, what you're going to do is you're going to want to plug into a central point where you can see all the web traffic going into the specific web server farm that you're monitoring. Okay, and that's where they're plugged into the switch or the load balancer in this diagram. Okay, now let's talk about the different methods of getting the traffic. So there's two methods that we'll talk about. These are spans and taps. So a span port, this is the most common for trials. Now what this is is a specially configured port on a switch, a load balancer, or some other appliance that people often use when they have multiple network monitoring devices they need to plug in. We also have, besides a span port, we have an aggregation tap. So an aggregation tap is one where you're going to plug your, your network line into where all your traffic is coming, and you're going to make a copy of that. So you're going to copy the transmit traffic and the receive traffic, or the requests and the responses, you're going to copy those on one line. So what you'll, you're basically doing is, is creating a phone tap like the CIA or the FBI might do, and that, that tap is getting that information off of the phone line without the people knowing on either end that, that somebody's actually listening in. So this is very similar to a span port because it's on one line. Now a traditional tap has transmits and receive on two lines. So instead of having one line come out on your tap, you're going to see two. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in subsequent slides. Okay, now just to give you a quick idea of a span port, this is, this is out of a Cisco manual. So what you'll see here is we're asking it port 5. Now this is a switch, so picture the box with 48 ports in it where you can plug network lines into, and it, it creates the network for those different 48 ports to communicate. So here what we're asking it to do is saying port 5, and port 5 hypothetically, let's say that's the line that's going to our load balancer. We want to mirror all that traffic going to our load balancer onto port 10. And the reason we want to mirror it onto port 10 is so that we can plug in a network analyzer. 
Hey, let's just take a look at that. So port five is spanned to port 10 in this case. That means we're mirroring the traffic on port five onto port 10. Okay, this is an internal configuration. So somebody actually logs into the switch and programs the switch to do that, to make that connection. Okay, you can span one or many. In this case, we're spanning only port five, but I could have just as easily said spans port one through 10 onto port 11. Okay, in the command line example, uh, this is your router config command line. You'd say monitor session one, and the beginning of that command would be destination interface fast ethernet five. So that's saying port five is our destination interface. Okay, now taps, let's take a look at taps versus aggregation taps. And this, these are actual physical devices. Instead of you going into an existing device and doing a command, you're buying this uh, as a supplemental device. So what a tap is, it's a little box where you'd plug a network line in and then you'd have your network line come out on the back, just as it represented here. But in the middle, you'd have other lines, other ports coming out of this where you could get your receive traffic out on one port and your transmit traffic out on another port. Now the way that these taps would work is we'd plug in Foglight Experience Monitor to the bottom and you'd plug those those lines which are copying your traffic into the monitor. Okay, an aggregation tap basically does the same thing. It's going to copy all of that traffic, only what it's going to do, it's only going to put one line out. So the difference between a tap and an aggregation tap is the number of lines that ha you have coming out of it in order to do your monitoring. Okay, so Foglight Experience Monitor will work, will work with a span port, a tap, or an aggregation tap. And now let's take a look at what we're actually monitoring once we plug these taps in. Okay, so what we're monitoring is on connection one, you have a getmain.html page come in. So this is a request initiation. Okay, after that, the server's gonna get the first packet. So that's when we see it with the monitor that we're plugged into your network with. After it gets that pa packet, the server's gonna send the last packet back from the last piece that was requested in order to create that page. Okay, so this is the final response received by the client is what we're measuring. So we're measuring from point one to point four and we're giving you a response time for that page and all of the elements on that page. Okay, with Web 2.0 it's a little bit different. With Web 2.0 you'll, you'll have a page that's already up and what you do, you might mouse over something or click a drop down menu. And this is a single request response that's going to go in. So the request is initiated as you mouse over that menu. And then after that, we're going to watch until the server gets the first packet, just like we did before. And then we're going to look for the last packet from that individual request. And this way, we could measure your asynchronous re requests within your synchronous request, which is your initial page load. OK, and that would be the final response received by the client. Now, if you have different CDNs and remote content, <clears throat> there's third-party effects that also come into play. So in this case, we'll have connection one, connection three, and connection four are going to Akamai. So this way we have origin server, and we also have a content delivery network in the picture here. So what we'll see with the network is we'll see points one, two, three, and four. We'll see the, all the pieces going through our connection. Uh, but we won't see the stuff from Akamai. So what we do here on connection two is we're using a, a special JavaScript here called getperf.js. And what we're able to do is inject these JavaScripts and get the real response times from the content delivery network. So this is a more advanced configuration of the Foglight Experience Monitor, but we wanted to make sure that you knew that we do capture information from content delivery networks. Looking at the back of the box, you're going to require two but we support up to three network connections. Okay, so port number five is required for the main web interface, and this is where you're gonna access the box to do the configuration and the cabling. Okay, and then port seven and eight are where you plug your other cables for your network monitoring. Now, the only thing you're gonna need besides those network cables are port number 12, which is your power, ports number two, and one of the, the number fours. Port number two is your monitor, and port number four is going to be your keyboard. Okay. Now, there'll be more on this after you receive your appliance and you get the next instructional video.
Thank you very much for attending.